All right. Happy Labor Day, everyone. Uh, Joe Carullo from Carullo's Corner at It's All About Scores.com. Uh, tonight is episode three of the Mike Wilson Show. I hope everybody had a great holiday weekend, uh, opening week of football. Uh, a lot of surprises. Mike, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. And I'm going to get right into it. Uh, before we get to Cumberland, I uh, hate to bring this up, but we got to uh, see what, what, what happened Friday morning with Cedar Grove. Uh, um, first off, hats off to Cedar Grove. That was in my all my years of coaching and my last years of shout. That is probably the best, well coached, fundamental technique team that I've seen in a long, long time. The quarterback was awesome. The receivers were good. They were well coached from the top down. Class act coaching staff. Uh, they they do a great job up there. Um, I think it was a perfect storm of events, but taking nothing away from them, they earned it. We did not. Um, they did a great job. Yeah, I was saying I had watched the film this morning, too. Uh, I thought they were really good. I mean, especially for a group one team, they look like they're going to do some damage. Uh, and whoever meets them is going to have to, you know, pack a lunch, as the old saying goes. Um, what, what, what could you I – mean, what you, would you guys get out of this? There's always something good that can come out of a, something bad. Uh, anything well, you could say, some positive you're going to bring into this week? Yeah, I mean, I think there's the old coaching cliche, um, winning conceals, losing reveals. So, I mean, over the weekend, players, coaches, everybody involved, we took a little long, hard look, reflected, and we made the necessary adjustments. We had a good day of practice today. I think um, it refocused the kids a little bit, especially the seniors. And um, we were a much better – we were a different team today. We Our attitudes were more reminiscent of the past. Um, sometimes, you need, sometimes you need to get a kick in the face for that to happen. All right. Well, I hope you know. I said I hope that um, you know, I hope that that does work. The wake up call. Um, I know your quarterback was injured. Tell us uh, how's he doing. Uh, Kanai is fully healthy. He did not play last week due to uh, an internal team decision. We have Joe. We have policies. You know me well enough. We have expectations and standards, and nobody's above those standards. Absolutely not. So, coming into this Cumberland game, uh, you, you feel at least attitude wise, you're back. Where you were a week ago, where you should be, you've pretty much, you know, flushed this, but learned the lessons from it. This is that a safe assumption? Oh, absolutely. I mean, when you look back at the game, and I know you watch the film, we look at the game, we committed eight penalties. That's not like us. We had three turnovers, which is not like us. And I think we had 10 to 12 bad snaps, like bad exchanges. And anybody who's watched us play the last two and a half, three years, we don't make those mistakes. And that was, I think, made me more upset as the coach was. Win, lose, or draw, we didn't play our brand of football on Friday morning. And, right. again, that, a lot of that was due to Cedar Creek. I mean, not Cedar Creek, Cedar Grove, sorry. Um, and the, they did a great job, and they put us in bad positions, and we put ourselves in bad positions. And we we have to clean up those mistakes. We have to worry about ourselves this week. We can't commit those mistakes. Right. Um, coming into the Cumberland game, as many people know, this was for like 20 years the Thanksgiving rivalry. Um, how do you feel about playing this game now as opposed to Thanksgiving weekend? Me personally, I don't – I mean, I coached – no, I didn't even coach Thanksgiving. It was my first year there. We moved the game, and that was that oh, 2020 right. COVID season. You're right. Um, so, I mean, my feeling is, I mean, Thanksgiving was great. I played in Thanksgiving Day games when I was a kid. But all the focus is now in the playoffs. i rather play them early. It counts for strength of schedule. It counts for power points. Um, it's still a great rivalry. We still have the trophy – um, presentation. We still do all those things. The rivalry is great. We'll have a great crowd. It's at home Friday night. Last time we played at home two years ago, we had 1,500 people there. Well, well, and, I think, yeah, I don't know what year it was. A couple of years ago, I attended that game at Cumberland in a pouring rain. That was a different story. That was 2021. 2022, we played at Shallock. That's when we had the big crowd. And last year, we were at Cumberland and had a pretty good crowd there, too. I remember this game very well. When I tell you a pouring rain, it was pouring. I remember driving there was a nightmare. I couldn't see where I was going. The game, however, was a really good game. It turned out to be, you know, like it, all the all the window dressings were horrible that night. But the actual product, it turned out to be a really great game. I think we were only of, what, three games that actually played that night? Everybody else got Everybody else got rescheduled? Yeah, it was very fun. I'm glad you guys kept it. I, it was a, one of my uh, fond high school football memories. Um, an interesting question for you. Yes. This was a game for years. It was hyped all as many former Thanksgiving games were hyped all year. And it had a story. Every game, you know, every Thanksgiving game had a storyline of its own. Here, there's no hype, no, no prep other than off season, which is much different. 
funny. This is like the kids go back to school this week and boom, it's like main event right away. I mean, you're getting right thrown right into the fire. There is no, no hype, no buildup. It's just like, you know, a, a main event early. I mean, you feel any, any type of feeling for that? Or maybe that's just me. Well, no, I mean, I think we're used to it. I mean, last year we played two games before school started and we played our third game when school starts. This year's only number two. Um, and again, I mean, we're so close. I mean, the kids know each other. A lot of these kids might even want the to school together. Then they move a street. They change sending districts. Um, up to last year, I don't know a lot of people realize, our wrestling programs were a co-op. No, I know that. So um, this year they separated. So this upcoming winter there will be a Shallock wrestling program, a Cumberland wrestling program. So a lot of the football players have wrestled together the last couple of years. So, I mean, they know each other. Like any rivalry, they know each other. Also, <clears throat> I think most people will be interested in, the game used to be called the neighborhood game back in the day. Yes. We changed that to the Mike Harz and Tom Lake game. And there's a trophy named after those two men. Tom Lake, the old um, Cumberland coach who passed away a couple years ago. Okay. And Mike Harz, former Shalik and Cumberland coach, who's a history teacher at Shalik, he passed away a few years before I, I got to, I think, 2017, 18, he passed away. Uh, tragically early so we named we named the game after them their families are at the game their families present the trophy okay, so great. we brought some tradition into it with those two coaches all right and you got it yeah you got a new and you got a new uh tradition going yeah. let's get to the game now um it would, it's, for those that don't know i was just going to ask you to tell me about those guys and you did uh can you tell me anything about cumberland through your scouting who are the major players what could you expect to see um i mean w watching their scrimmages because they haven't played a game yet so this is our second game is their first um, very athletic, like usual, big offensive linemen, big things. And again, I mean, this is early in the season. It's their first game. It's our second game. You never know what's going to happen. It's a rivalry game. They're athletic everywhere, Joe. They got athletes everywhere. Cumberland hasn't changed in 30 years. There's athletes everywhere. All right. Yeah. Cause I, I know, um, like, how would you say uh, strengths and weaknesses? How do you match up against each other? What's the, tell me a little bit about the chess match that, you know, a lot, only people. Chess are match is going to be, is can we contain their speed? Um, can we keep can we keep the big play from occurring, and can we limit our mistakes? I believe if we can limit our limit 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 our mistakes, like I talked about from last week, and we can improve in the areas that we have identified, we'll be okay, um, and we'll have a shot to win the game at the end. Uh, we just got to contain their big playability. Right. So, uh, you know, going on to everything. I mean, I guess that's uh, pretty much uh, about you know your game coming up Friday night. This past weekend, anything strike you as surprising in any of these other games? I mean, to me, Paulsboro, Pensgrove was a little of a surprise. I'd heard Paulsboro was going to be down again and Pensgrove was going to be up. Uh, Paulsboro beat him. Is the borough back? Great question. Great story. You, know, um, you would have a better answer than me because, in all honesty, since the final whistle blown at our game, we've been as a staff and as kids working hard to get ready for Cumberland. I mean, I had to watch a lick or – maybe scroll Twitter to see or X, whatever they call it now for some scores and stuff like that. I've been just nose to the grind trying to, uh, to, to write our ship, write your ship. And I think you will, like I said, I know there's a lot of expectation might going into this year and uh, maybe what happened Friday could be a blessing in disguise down the road. I'll give you a little history lesson back in 2011 opening day, Pensgrove beats Glassboro 55 to nothing. Do you remember who won group one that year? Glassboro. Okay. So a little history lesson there. Okay. Yeah. And so you never know. And maybe it was that loss that said, Hey, you know, maybe we're, you know, we think we're better than, who knows? Yeah. I mean, a lot of things go into this could be the opening day jitters, but uh, you know, a lot could happen. I'm, and uh, so you really don't have it. You really uh, pay much attention. Sorry for the uh, delay here. Yeah. Good, there, the uh, train going by. Um, I, I paid attention. I mean, the Oakcrest upsetting Hamilton 20 to nothing really surprised me. Like I said, I know you weren't paying attention to all this, but uh, I did see that. I mean, again, like I said, like, I mean, I think it was a great weekend of football. I think the Battle of the Beach is fantastic. They had another great year. It was. Um, even with the split venues because of the Philadelphia Catholic League being in Ocean City. I mean, I think it was a great, great weekend. I mean, like, you just, you can't beat that. It was. They, Mike and uh, they did John a did a job. great job. They did. Guys, I hope you're listening. You guys did a great job again. Already looking forward to Absolutely. next year. Uh, I'm trying to think of any other big upset. I mean, there was a lot. It's funny. Talk about the battle at the beach. You had a lot of South Jersey powers all beating up on these North Jersey powers. You had Winslow winning. You had Cherokee winning. You had Washington Township winning. Uh, the South was well represented. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I like you get those North-South uh, matchups that you usually don't get in the regular season. 
you get out of state matchups. I mean, obviously, we all know about IMG, IMG right. and Broken Catholic. Sure, sure. Hey, hey, look, John and Mike do a great job. All the coaches help. I mean, if I mean, you go out there, all the retired coaches, like Coach Bobby Weiss was there, like guys that, like, I mean, it's, it's great for the football community in South Jersey. Yeah, it is. I'm just hoping, uh, I'm going off topic here, that we can get some neutral fields uh, showcase type of games again for the state semifinals. As you know, they were taken away from the neutral site just last year back at the higher seed. A lot of people like that. I don't. I like to see multiple games, but another story for another time. Mike, uh, anything else you want to add for tonight? No, um, hey, no, Joe, thank you very much. I appreciate the time, and um, I'll see you next week. All right, I'll talk to you next week. Good luck Friday night against Cumberland. I'm sure the crowd's going to be great. I think the weather's supposed to hold up. Looks good. Uh, Football season is here. So Finally. Thanks, Joe. All right, Mike. Thank you. Joe Carollo from Carollo's Corner. It's all about scores signing off. See you guys next week.